All right, uh, last segment here, guys, uh, that we do every Monday is trash that makes cash. I can't delay it anymore. Uh, Marky, the people, uh, they they seem to like it, I think. Uh, I'm not certain about that. People who love it probably love it, and others are like, that's trash. I, I, I feel like that sometimes, I'll be honest. Uh, but a lot of these picks that you've been going through, Mark, have actually been very fruitful in the last couple of months. So what do you got for us today? I don't know, collectively, friend? and first of all, I'd like to uh, – give a shout out to the new trash for trash expert uh matt justice who <laughs> gave me uh, a good trash pick that i made money on this list week rel rel thank you thank you uh you know in fact it wouldn't even qualify it's... right now it wouldn't even qualify right now no, it's I about five dollars i i'm the trash king you're, 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 listen i'm not afraid That's... We have the architect. We have the queen. Now, if you maybe if you and were we more open-minded, Tim, trash. That's me. I'm the king. Yeah, of so trash. I got to step up my game, or Matt's gonna yeah. steal my trash. Uh, yeah. My trash yeah. now. See that? Right. That's what I do, Mark. When I touch something, it's no longer trash. Listen, the first company I have for you today, because I'm interested, because you know we've had a real volatility on the underbelly, and a lot of the, uh, you know, this these cheaper stocks. Uh, they get swept up in that volatility big. And so I really was looking this week at companies that have done well in this recent volatility, held the own. Because once again, the broad markets do not let you know the volatility in the underbelly, the meme stocks, the theme stocks at all. So I look at companies that have held up a little well. Now, Matt and Tim, the first company I have for you at one point had a market capitalization of $41 billion. Oh, oh, that makes me care not at all. They once owned the naming rights to the home stadium for the New England Patriots. That makes me hate them even more. Uh, this is You're not doing a great job selling me on this big, bro. Oh, I just I just thought these were fun facts of the company. I just they, they don't matter at all in the analysis. I, I usually I usually see naming rights on stadiums as as a really dumb way to spend your investors' money. It, it, it is questionable decision, and this is a former dot com dot com bubble bust. Mm. Still connect. S T C N. And the, if you go to a weekly chart for me. Now, one of the things I like is, once again, this st stability, because in following the underbelly, oh, my gosh, so many stocks that are cheap stocks have just got rocked uh, over the last month. Uh, so many different areas. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not just talking about stocks under five dollars, just, you know, your SPACs and your theme stocks. And so I, I wanted to look at, you know, in the recent weeks when so much of this volatility has been going on. Uh, when even small caps have been struggling, who's been holding their own? Who has been showing a little strength? And who might be on the verge of a technical signal? Uh, Still Connect came off. Now, I will be the first to admit, I don't know a lot about this, this, this company. So, so many of the times I bring a pick here is because I love the stories, like Chico Voss. Like, you know, I love those stories. And so I don't know this company as well, but so I did this in analyzing when I was scanning last night, you know, it's like looking for stability and pattern, looking for potential technical breakouts and all still connect came up. Now, if you go back to the daily chart, so the weekly chart has some smoothness to it. And from the daily chart perspective, we got some potential levels of breakout. Now you're clearing one of those levels today, right? A little short term uh, resistance from the last little week. But there's obviously a mile to go on the chart. There's a mile to go on the chart uh, from a technical standpoint, because that's the only selling case I have. Do you guys have any interest? To clarify, this is a shipping company, right? Not a steel company. They don't do ship. They don't do shipping. They do uh, supply chain management services. Okay. I see, like logistics and freight and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and once again, I don't know a lot about the company itself. It came up on a scan. I did a little research, and I was like, oh, my gosh, they used to have the New England. And I was like, I remember them because I remember when the, the, the company lost the naming rights to the Patriot Stadium because they went bust. And then, then I was like, ah, oh, so little nostalgia memory for my football past. Right, 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 right. Um, 
I mean, I see the pivot points changing here, obviously, with the momentum rolling back into that. Obviously, the gap uh, from early January catches everybody's attention. That's where the volume is. It bursted out from a buck 40. Uh, looks like it popped up all the way to $2.90 there just in that one day. It's taken a couple months to compress that. Uh, it's not, I'm looking at the history of this company, and it's starting to pick up since November. So there's there's something here above 2 bucks, but then you've got the left of the chart, 220 and the 290. Uh, I don't know if I would, could map this out. I have 10 an interest uh, here uh, to be to be blunt well i mean when you look at it you also look at it like pretend this was a 200 dollars stock and it was a 205 you know 220 that would give you a lot of room you know 290 i mean you wouldn't let those things stand in your way if you thought there was a chance of upward or short-term price movement so mm -hmm. matt do you have any interest what's less than tepid <laughs> zero <laughs> that's where i'm at well, it's less than tepid. <laughs> zero. <laughs> All right, Marky. Uh, so I don't think tepid is less than zero, but that was oh, funny. Mine is less than zero. Zero is less than tepid. All right. Uh, next one is um, brought up. Patriots. No. Tom Brady went to Florida. Done. <laughs> No, how that's connected. <laughs> it's it's a, it's as connected as anything else we're talking about on this company. <laughs> All righty, Marky. For us, that's uh, you didn't you didn't get me on still connect. No. All right. The next one is can, a good can one. I tell you why? No, real, really. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, the daily chart is a garbage mess of dumpster truck fire. Like it's just you cannot get a read here. It's very very difficult to get an accurate read here. Stop loss management would have to go under one five in my opinion to get outside of any of that chop. Uh, your trigger above two might work out, but your targets to two. I don't think the return justifies the risk. I just said the New England Patriots. Tom Brady went south because I didn't. Like, yeah. What else you got? About how, how do you feel about the Dolphins trades? You know week? what, Mark? I, I want to be very clear on something. When you're looking at a company, you invest in not just the brand, you invest in the individuals that run the company. And if I were to break down the NFL management techniques and company management, I would put the Dolphins in the top three right now. And I think if you're, if you're an NFL fan and you're looking for a team to bet on the next 20 years – Get the Dolphins. It has nothing to do with the players on their team. It has everything to do with their management. Do they have disruptive innovation? <laughs> they have they have disruptive innovation elevation. <laughs> oh listen, they, I love what they they're elevate doing. the disruptive nature of innovation, Tim. That's right. If you're an NFL fan, uh, the Dolphins made some pretty good moves last week. Uh so shuffle pretty up good. Some draft picks. No. Winning people at life make those moves. And if you know uh, Coach Matt here at all, he's a huge Dolphins fan. The entirety of listen, his life, so. and anybody that knows me, I, I'm a I'm a very like I I just always hate on my own team. I'm excited, guys. Yeah. You wait till wait till the Dolphins start winning. You're gonna have to deal with that level of Matt. No, it's not good for you too. Coach management, young players, good draft picks. The management, the right division, mm -hmm. decision making mm -hmm. process. Yeah, I have a lot more to say on that trade than I do this company. Mm -hmm. They should have kept Ryan Fitzpatrick as a backup. You're ridiculous. All right, I love my second and last one uh, is one I brought a couple of weeks ago. It's been one of my favorite cash flow plays for the last year. Uh, it's been right in the nine for about three weeks now. Uh, you know, Genius Brands, G G N U S. So I brought this you know, up a couple. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, Mark, this is one I wrote down technically. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, this, and once again, this has been a stock that I've loved to cash flow, huge premiums, back and forth, volatility has been high, been really nice. I mean, there have been time stretches, like on the GameStop fiasco that happened in, in January. I was getting like 80 bucks for $2 naked puts on, I mean, it was, there are time pockets where the cash flow is just, but it has been setting up and there has been some movement. And so once again, it fits that theme of, you know, Small cap stocks have not done well. Penny stocks have not done well over the last month. SPACs haven't done well. Genius Brands, and it's Stan Lee and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And if you don't know who Genius Brands is, they do children's programming. And so cartoons, children's content. Uh, and have been acquiring a lot of IP in the last year. It's a company that nobody knew about a year ago, kind of got in the cult consciousness 
uh, during the pandemic because of the big spike it had. It, it was one of the first stocks to do something absolutely insane and crazy where people were like, that's ridiculous. Uh, and so it kind of became a cult stock amongst traders. Uh, but you're seeing some upward pressure and you're seeing a clear breakout level potentially at three. Um, you know, and so if you go to the, that weekly chart, and that, that spike where it went to 1173, that's what I was talking, where it got into the cult consciousness. Um, you know, but uh, you, you yeah, see that a little... Yeah, that was the uh, peak euphoria post-pandemic. That's right? when Hertz was going yeah, yeah, up, yeah. right? And yep, so I remember the storyline. Genius brands and Hertz, they were kind of this, oh, what's the market's insane. Well, we've seen a lot of insane stories since then, right? Uh, and so, but you're seeing, I mean, this is a company that the, the believers in this company, and I don't know if I'm a hardcore believer or if I just like the cash flow and it's a stock that's treated me very well for a year, uh, but the, the story that they make is a very compelling one about acquiring content, acquiring intellectual property, acquiring brands. Uh, the Stanley recently, one of the big gets. And so they're actually acquiring, you know, content, IP to put into, you know, programming network. So there is a story here uh, there's also a technical level uh, with a lot of clear air to the upside. So I uh, wanted to see you guys' take on the technicals on that. Well, uh, technically, I, I don't like anything under three here, Chuck. Yeah, I do like the breakout formation above three, though, uh, and, uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, you get the hesitation above uh, right at three. That's where it kissed off in earlier January before it got plummeted right back down to some degree of reality. Came back up, fought against that three again, got beat up a little bit last week. Did get caught up in any type of bloodbath, though, really kind of riding that nine. I think that riding the nine really solidifies your your opinion on that potential breakout. So uh, that's first and foremost. I, I don't like the dip. I think the dip's choppy and would be difficult from a stop loss management perspective. But I do like the potential of that breakout. You look at that on that weekly chart, you see that breakout of $3 line up with the potential target. Uh, into the 325 range, that'd be target one. If you get above 32025, you got nothing until you get into the four. Uh, and so, yeah, I definitely see the a potential breakout here on Genius Brands. And you said, Mark, you don't know what you like about this company. I do know what you like about this company. You like the name. That's what you like. You like the name Genius Brands. That's it. It's a good name. Yeah, you like the name. I get it. Uh, I also like I Stan Lee. You know, I, do, so. I do like Stanley too. I don't, I, I think that the dip's a little choppy here. It's, it, it's not that way on this, on the daily chart, but if I scale in, you kind of see that little chop on the wicks here, little chop on the wicks there. I think that's really choppy here, but you keep riding that nine that breaks out of three. I think you got some pretty, Pretty good price appreciation above you three. You know what they so. say when Genius Brands uh, goes to three, it goes to four every time. You know. Well, you know. Uh, other than the fourteen times it did stop at three twenty. Other than that, hey, you know, yeah. it would have been fun to do trash uh, that makes cash in the pandemic. Hey, Matt and Tim, I got a stock. Currently, it's at five cents. I know you it would. It would have been a different beast. <laughs> Oh, and, uh, I got this Bitcoin mining stock. It's now at 47 cents. It's called Riot. Yeah. Uh, any what do you, what do you think of Riot? In Riot at 47 cents. Um, uh, I'm willing to bet I would have want, wanted what I said actually to be recorded. <laughs> I would have said some horrible things about Riot. So, so actually, I think I do have some horrible things I've said about Riot in uh, recordings. But no, Mark, Genius Brands, I, th I think the breakout is what does interest me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, there's two things. And, 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 and right now, because I've done, I don't like it at this net, current level, even for a naked put, if you're going to do some cost average down like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing. me either. I, I like either it like it to break out or I like a much deeper pullback. I, it, for me, it's a little bit of a no man's land right now, but yeah. no man's land is, you know, a setup before something happens, right? Oh, man. It's, so. See, the district Mark and me, Mark would see a, a, a sell off to one six. And oh, I'd sell those that, 150 that is, naked puts that is like the that. Greatest thing in the history of mankind, and I'd be like, "That's garbage, purely garbage." But the breakout, I love that from a momentum. It's just to each his own, right? Mm -hmm. But the breakout, I do like the breakout here. And plus, we always d develop, and this is for any trader, stocks that treat us well. We d develop a sentimental attachment to, right? So.
what is it with healthcare and trash? There are 188 stocks, <laughs> over 750,000 shares traded daily that has, uh, like, by far, the most trash is in healthcare. Is that right? Uh, it's biotech and pharma companies. Hold on. Hold on. I'm telling you. I'm looking. At, I, I See, I didn't do any scanning for uh, trash. I wanted to find you guys a quality pick. I'm looking at industrials, 28 stocks, base and materials, 31 stocks, communication services, 33 stocks, healthcare, every stock. Like, man, trash. Who knew like healthcare was where all the trash was? All of it. Dude, it's probably a lot of those biotech firms. It's yeah. a lot of those biotech those firms. Those little dinky biotech Tons firms. Tons of those yeah. biotech firms. By the way, Mark, you made my job easy here. Uh, Genius was my pick as well. Let's Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I like the go. breakout above three. I think uh, the momentum here is uh, potentially tradable. Now, now what if it pulls back points. to 150? Can I get not, you to? Not interested. There's not a chance. <laughs> I'm not interested. If it not fails chance. trend and pivot. See, I'm interested in playing a momentum but, breakout. Uh, you want to own shares or sell naked puts against it at lower levels. The only thing Mark wants more in life than this going to five cents is four cents. That's it. <laughs> Listen. Listen, you know, this was like about a blah market because the market's been blah the last six weeks, right? I like a blah market, like, because you get some things to sell off. Uh, Genius Brand hasn't been one of them. I've been kind of upset. All right. I got a couple trash picks. Let's hear Okay. I, I made money on yours last week. Let's, so see you if I can, let's, see if, let's see if I can make you some money, Chucky. Okay. All right. Okay. And I, I spent a lot of time finding these two picks. All right. A lot what, of time. The last four minutes, right? How long is trash... That makes cash been going on Ten. about six seven minutes about two minutes all right let's start with the banks now what do you guys think of the banks let's start top what do you think of the banks top rate, i like top financials moving forward yep. we like financials right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what 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 bank do you guys like what banks just give me a couple of banks you like oh we love bank of america for cash Look, flow we love goldman Sachs love on america the street cash flow, right and- yeah. Got like this trend, potential breakout there, 39, good cash flow play. I agree with that. Stable mm-hmm. company. What Mark, give me a bank you like. Mark's got uh, Mark Mark likes Goldman. Yeah, he, he's he's a fan of the devil. I love Goldman. Yep, fan of the devil. Nice little, you know, bullish retracement coming into 320. I don't see this as pivot confirmation, so I do see that as a retracement, a little deeper retracement, but I I, I could see it. Okay. All right. Tim. Where's where's all the where's all the like old money banks? I want to see. Okay, <clears throat> what city halftime crew? This is this question for you. Matt's gonna what talk city? About what city has all the old money in? What city has uh, ooh? Where is the mecca of forex trading in what city? The what ne- city? What do you guys think? Oldest money in the world. I'm. I'm well, I was yeah. thinking Zurich, Switzerland. Well, I was thinking mm-hmm. London. Mm-hmm. I was thinking London myself. It is London. Yeah. It is London. Did, London. Fun Lloyd's. fact. Fun fact. London. Fun fact. Did fun you fact. know there are more billionaires per capita in London than any city yep. in the world? London's financial mecca. Uh, you got you got Lloyd's for us, don't you? Lloyd's. I do have Lloyd's Bank. I know my under world. five tra- stocks. I I I was giving you a couple hints. I was giving you a couple hints, but I got Lloyd's Banking Group here under five bucks. How do you not play that breakout? Here's what I like. Here's what I like about the breakout. It is, like Mark said, very, very clean. It's a lot cleaner than most of those big name uh, charts you'll look at the Goldman Sachs, the Bank of America's, the Morgan Stanley's of the world. You want to go look at your insurance companies? You can find some chop there. What you're not going to find is a better potential trigger in the entire financial That's clean. The one above 231. That clean triggers. You know what else they happen? They get clean stop losses, guys. Clean triggers get clean stop losses. That's why we love them. And so you got that clean trigger here. You got a clean stop loss underneath 2.2. And so you got a trigger above 2.31. You got a stop loss underneath 2.2, and you let it ride. So Lloyd's Banking Group on the breakout of 2.31 with the stop underneath 2.2 is the financial trash company that hopefully triggers this week. Mark, what do you think? Oh, hundred percent. No brand. Tim? If it, if it triggers, you're in. Tim. No, I'm passing. Tim, don't, what? <laughs> Tim, see, he uh, sees uh, genius uh, let's, brands. Let's hear, like, let's hear him. Let, uh, 
I know he, why he's passing. I would like uh, I would like to know why Tim doesn't like this trigger. No, I do like the trigger. It's there. It, it's definitely qualified. It's the ADR nature of uh, the little gappy stuff. It's that it, he, it's too boring for him, man. It's too boring. The ADR. For him. That's his way of Are saying. Are you the- kidding me? You vetoed based on ADR. <laughs> That's why you vetoed that trigger? Hold on. I'm not done, Mark. I'm not done. Hold on. Look at how this lines up historically. Now, you didn't show me the weekly. Look, hold on. Hold on. No, because all you saw was ADR in the name. You are such a brand guy. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) If that didn't say Apple, he was out. Like, he's like, no, it's got to be a brand. Where's the queen? Um, Like, look at that trigger on the weekly chart. Look at that stop on a dime. Boom. You can't say you want the queen. You just said you wanted a trade genius brand. The you queen, don't know. You don't the get queen, queen back the up. The queen trades this above 231. That's what the queen does. Dude, you can trade more than 100 shares, Tim, to make it exciting if the ADR isn't enough yeah, for you. you. don't have to buy <laughs> one share, bro. <laughs> Tyler. I like it. I like no clean. Tyler would absolutely Mark would Tyler be on my side. Dude, that it? is clean as like, it can be yeah. in a hot area of the market. Tim, you you vetoed this. Oh my goodness, nobody would have vetoed this in the in the in the oh to be clear, I didn't veto, I passed. You vetoed. <laughs> right, right, what else I, like got, it. I like veto. it. I like yeah. it. I like it. Let me see if I can get Tim on something else. He doesn't like clean breakouts in the banks. Um okay, Tim. I I found something that was that was more more mark i was thinking about mark i was thinking about mark but maybe i can get you here too all right now this is usws us Mm -hmm. well services it is in it's an energy company oil and gas specifically all right now mark your take on energy specifically what's what's your take on energy here In, in the in over the next say Two weeks, two, three weeks. Oh, two, three weeks. I don't know. I mean, shoot, two, three weeks, anything can happen. Long term, I like energy. Long term, we like it. Two, three weeks, we could anticipate a little bit of a chop, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kind of, that's kind of the, yeah, that's how I see it as well. So when you're looking, when you're looking at energy itself, there's a few different industries that you can also, uh, that you can also look at. This one is specifically an oil and gas company. Is what it uh, is what it is. Now I want to say I don't know what the current market cap of this company is. Let me let me get you. I don't think it's very much. It's like eighty five million dollars. Yep, eighty five million dollars. Market doesn't have a PE ratio. Obviously, a lot of energy companies just don't. It's a debt driven company right now. You also have a company though that does have a forward PE ratio. Mark, I think you're going to get a little excited about this one. Mark, it has a seven point five four PE ratio. Okay, debt driven right now. 7.54 pre ratio price to book is in the negative assets aren't good. Again, it's, it's fundamentals are trash. There's no doubt about that, but I don't see anything so disconcerting in its fundamentals that would say that you couldn't find in, in a conical Phillips right now. Right. Cause mm-hmm. conical Phillips debt driven too. So USWS fundamentally, I don't have that many concerns. It's a trash company. That's the disclaimer. What I like about this is technically driven not fundamentally driven. This horrible, volatile retracement, where is it coming into? Right there. Resistance, yeah. Well, I'll give you even one better. Go go to the weekly chart. Yeah, yeah. I'll get there, Chucky. Now, you see that little slowing momentum here? That's dinging right at a dollar. The significant whole number, right, is one dollar. You're starting to form support right there at that $1 mark. Where does that $1 mark line up into? Historical resistance. So you see that $1, $1, $1, $1, $1. You like that historical resistance zone. You look at that on the weekly chart. Hmm. You see that W, long-term W formation. Right, long-term W formation. Plus, last yeah, week in the out. volatility. Yeah, go ahead, it came, Chuck. It came down to the twenty weekly. Stopped on the penny. Stopped shows on there's the no fear. penny. Mark stopped on the penny. Look at that. Let, let me get in real, real tight against that. You see that wick right there, Tim? Mm-hmm. That is literally on the penny of that weekly. Right. So you got a real good backdrop. 
What that also means, Mark, is I got a real good stop loss underneath that tick there. Got a real good stop loss underneath 91 cents. Clean stop loss underneath 91 cents. Let's come back to the daily chart. Now, this is a uh, short-term bearish downtrend. You're looking at this as a as that support level forming at that one dollar mark. Obviously, we're going to look at this here. You see it within the range there, right? It can stay within this range. You could care less. You really could care less. Coming back out to the daily chart, you're probably looking at a trigger. And, and honestly, I don't know yet because we're talking about a retracement that's finding support. And so I don't know, but you're probably talking north of 1-1. And so you're looking at an entry above 1-1. Your stop loss is under 91. You got the backdrop of the technicals. You know the support level you're dealing with. Tim and Mark, what do you think of a potential buy the dip candidate weekly style on USWS? I'll go first. I, I like it. <clears throat> I think, uh, first of all, I love the developing trend on the weekly chart. Uh, stop loss placement, where, where do you have it? Just underneath the pivot? Under 9.1. It's got to be, be underneath the uh, pivot on the weekly because that's where you're lo really looking at supporting that tested 9.1. Sure. So it, it would have to be under 9.1. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do like it. I love uh, the, the potential reward to risk dynamics when you take it a play like this. This is a dirty little cheap uh, penny stock. Obviously, we're talking about a dollar company trash that makes cash. It's in this segment for a reason. Uh, the fact that you can even map out clear stop entry target on this is a good sign. You know, it doesn't see it does seem to trade pretty well. Technically, it trended up nicely. It's now been trending back down towards that old retracement uh, level. Now, mind you, I don't I, this is not a swing trade. Nope, it's not. We're talking about a weekly retracement. That, that, that's not how you start swing trade analysis. This is a little bit longer term. This fits Mark's position style analysis. How deep could I give the stop loss and still make it? You can go, that, that's the tightest you could get. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That, like I was talking to my daughter. <laughs> so she's watching this show, my 11-year-old, mm -hmm. right? She comes up to me and she says, hey, dad, like when's the next season of this show come out? I'm like, oh, well, they just started the new one on CW. You can watch it on CW. She goes, no, on Netflix. When's it going to come out on Netflix? And I said, minimum of six months. She goes, okay, but what's the shortest time frame? I said, honey, think about what I just said. So the shortest time, the shortest stop loss you would do is 91. Mm -hmm. Now the question goes to what's the max, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's based on reward to risk ratio and position style analysis would definitely be targeting up in the, in, in the two range position style what mm -hmm. so you can give that stop loss enough room but you got to be i would say north of one 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 four you got to be north of once you got to be north of 65 and south of 91 that gives me a, some room to wiggle in there yeah it, it does yeah. it does it, it you could probably get it all the way under this pivot if you really wanted to like you could get it all the way under there if you really wanted to. But at that point, you're saying it's getting back up here. And I just don't know if that's realistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do like a little bit of a tighter. Maybe you can go under 85 here. Yeah, under 85, you got some chop here. You can get under 85. I like the minimum of 90, uh, a minimum stop loss underneath, uh, again, south of 91, north of 65 that puts you into that pivot range. You could get it underneath 85 and feel perfectly fine with it. I like it. I, I like the numbers. What's up, Gino? Mark, what do you think? No, I, no, I like, I mean, and, and you're seeing a lot of weakness. Mark right walked now. away and bought shares already. <laughs> yeah, right. No, Mark probably checked the option chain first. No, he's like, no, <laughs> there is no option chain. Unfortunately, no. this, so. this is not, this is not one of those ones that Mark can, can do a lot of naked put analysis on. No, so no, I like it. The 20 weekly bounces off the 20 weekly in uh, the, the smaller companies like this in this situation. It's a no brainer for me.